All right. Well, here we are with my 17 Ram 3500 Cummins ASIN 410 gears. Yeah, been a good truck so far. Like I said, I don't drive it a whole heck of a lot. I only really tow my trailers with it. Uh, I've got other cars to drive, and this thing is miserably uncomfortable driving it unloaded. But it is a great tow beast. Um, but had to take it to Texas yesterday to bring my travel trailer back from uh, the uh, the park I've been at for this turnaround I've been working, and it did some weird stuff on the way home. First thing that I you know on the way there everything was fine. The tire pressure sensors were all good, and uh, let's see if it's still doing it. And I looked on my way home after I picked the trailer up, and all of a sudden the right front was showing. 40 psi rather than 90 because it was hot let's see and so that was kind of weird so i wasn't too sure about that thought maybe i picked up a nail or something so i pulled over Oop. Oh, get over there there we go yeah and you can see that right front is still showing 40. i checked it with my uh tire pressure gauge that i carry and it's at 85 you know it's it's exactly where the other one is it is not down so something's going on there i've got that that showed up then while we were driving i would get a service four-wheel drive that light that came on here i wasn't in four-wheel drive i was not touching four-wheel drive i was doing 65 70 miles an hour on the highway and i would get a service four-wheel drive light it's like well that's interesting and uh and then it would go out. So I started paying attention to it a little bit. And I, um, the next time it happened, all of a sudden you could hear kind of a very low howl, rattly noise. Something that shouldn't have been there and coming out of the front end. And then the light would come on, maybe 15 seconds after I started hearing that noise. And then we'd be driving maybe another minute, minute and a half, and that noise would still be there. And then the light would go off and then the noise would stop and the light would go off and it did that a couple three times uh, i finally got off the highway where i was able to be on a back road where there was nobody behind me the speed limit was a little lower i got it down below 50 miles an hour you know and i put it in you know just going nice straight road i put it in four-wheel drive it shifted into four-wheel drive no problem put it back in two-wheel drive it shifted out of four-wheel drive no problem everything was good uh, when i got home i tested four lock i tested four low Everything was fine. Transfer case worked. Everything shifted good. And it hasn't thrown that coat again. Um, but something was going on there. So that was interesting. Like I said, now it's fine. It's been good. I haven't driven it since I got home, but uh, I got to go put some fuel in it. So I'm going to have to take it out at some point. But uh, let's get under there and I'll show you what I got. <clears throat> First thing, of course, is this. <laughs> because, of course, there is. There is another recall on this thing because of course there is for the drag link saying that that loosens up and bad things can happen but i haven't touched it and see the blue paint the blue paint mine is still tight from the factory so i don't want them to weld that thing so i'm going to make try to make sure they don't now scooting back here to where i think one of my problems is I got an oil leak on this actuator, and I believe this actuator slides some sort of a collar to lock this axle in to make sure you got four wheel drive. Um, but I smelled it. That's not just for me being sloppy doing my oil changes. That's actually gear grease coming out of here. So I'm not going to touch this. I'm going to let them figure that out. But there's something going on with this actuator. Uh, either, you know, something's amiss. It, it did not act properly yesterday. Uh, the other thing I noticed when I was down here, just randomly, that I'm going to have them look at, and remember this only has 15,086 miles on it, but I appear to have a front main seal leak. This is... 
a little wet coming from up above and again this is not left over from I don't think this is left over from me being a slob changing my oil I think that is coming from the crank seal so I'm gonna have to have them check that out hopefully I don't see any trail where that could have come from to get to where it is you know like if it came from above somewhere but it appears I have a couple of leaks and I'm getting ready for my fourth oil change on this thing so I'm gonna hold off on that <clears throat> but uh, like I said you can see some of this slop because you know this is a little dirty because this is me changing the oil and this is a pain in the butt to change but I don't believe I've gotten that much that recently up in this area here so that's interesting so I may stop by the dealer tomorrow talk to the service department and see what we can do like I said I don't really need this truck too much if I'm not going anywhere uh, but so they'll have a little time to figure it out but the oil leak I'm sure they'll figure it out and then that actuator, I've seen this people online having some trouble with that, so we will have to see what we see. But I really don't want to bodging this thing up, because, you know, why? It's tight. So, just leave it. Anyway, that's the update on the big Dodge for today. Well, I just took the big girl to top up the tank because if it's going to sit any length of time i don't like having an airspace and of course l o l the tire pressure started working properly the when i turned it on after i got gas <laughs> so whatever intermittent glitch that was is returned maybe i just need to lie under it every now and again but it's definitely going to get looked at for that leak uh, out of the axle and the leak out of the front of the engine. So we're going to go from there. Talk to y'all later.